6.15 on 5GN, and now it's time to say a very good morning to Ralph Bain up there at Oak Bank. Oh, thank you very much, Andrew. Good morning, everyone. We have two sensational pieces of news for you. Here we are, live from Oak Bank, in our very special broadcasting point. We're actually inside. This is a bit soldiers outside. But uh, we just like to tell you that we have some of the best-known names in the sporting world with us here today on 5GN, live from Oak Bank. We'd like to tell you that. But why start off such a wonderful broadcast with a big lie? <laughs> <laughs> Patsy, will you deal with him, Patsy? I'd very much like to introduce my panel. My panel. I'm the buttered toast, they said. Well, actually, I'm, I've got to be the host of this because I know absolutely nothing about tomato sauces. But uh, we do have the fellow who can give you the egg flips. And uh, Ron Pats is with us this morning. Good morning, Ron. Good morning, Ralph. Nice and bright and brisk this morning, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is very, very fresh. If there's any fresher outside, we'd have to call the police. We also have with us <laughs> K.G. Cunningham. Good, Good morning, Ken. Good morning, Chilly. How are you? Yes. You look remarkably uh, well this morning in a, in a suit and tie and the white shirt and even the hair's combed this morning. What's happened? Well, uh, the white shirt is there to match my face. And the, I combed my hair, I'm glad you remarked on it, because I went to a lot of trouble, I combed my hair with a sheet of masonite, <laughs> I uh, ironed this shirt with a stock whip, <laughs> and pressed the trousers with a square mouth shovel. Also, we have with us Captain Rick Davies, who's triumphant, uh, from Saturday. In fact, I'm surprised at your attire. Good morning, congratulations, Rick. Thank you very much, Ralph. I doubt whether he could win anyway if he did start, but... Um you must have been very pleased to keep the money in South Australia on Saturday in the Bondusa. It was a great performance by Moravian, wasn't it? Yes, it was great to see the local horses do so well uh, because the, it looked as if the interstate horses perhaps had an edge on the local horses uh, looking at the, uh, right. the paper before. But uh, the tables were turned and the locals uh, did very, very well. It was an amazing sight to that trip to the uh, to the Von Dusa, uh, Ron. I saw it on television. I just couldn't believe the way Moravian and, uh, of course, Flying Knox sprinted at the finish. It was incredible. No, well, they, I sort of assessed him as being about six lengths behind them just as they jumped the last one down the hill, which brings them into the straight. And uh, he's won by about two lengths. So on my calculations, he's made up eight lengths, basically, in the length of the straight. It was a tremendous sprinting finish by a jumper. Incredible. Another bit of news, um, uh, Rick Corlacey has allowed uh, Kaimoto uh, to come onto the uh, track today and he'll be leading the field out for the Great Eastern. Oh, that's great. That's a bit of colour to the race. Mm. Great. And well, wonderful. he's probably the best jumper I've seen since Crisp, I would think, Joe, Kaimoto. Well, I think he must be. Uh, his credentials are uh, uh, magnificent, aren't they? And uh, let's hope he does go to England next year. Well, if he does, um, looking at those jumpers there that we saw only, what, a week or so ago in that uh, exciting national from Aintree, um, he'll be the one to beat. No, oh, it'd be, it'd be uh, sensational, wouldn't it? Well, Chris nearly did it some years ago, and I think kaimoto has got a real chance of, of doing it next year if he goes. Well, Ralph, you've been studying all sorts of form, including the form of the Great Eastern. Uh, what's your choice? Well, uh, I'm looking for an omen bet. Um, and uh, with such a good panel, I think fine advice would be an open uh, omen bet uh, for the Dandyham Great Eastern Steeplechase. Uh, to keep uh, jumping alive in South Australia. It's certainly alive and well in Victoria. Um, and Ron, I'm sure you bear me up, the Western mm. Districts now is becoming a very, very strong big. circuit there, isn't it? Oh, for sure. Well, even down in the Gippsland area, which was always a remote area in terms of jumping races, the hurdles are starting to bob up there, not steeples at this stage, but it'll probably come. Um, the jumping races are here forever as far as I'm concerned. Okay. I've always been a great supporter of them. They've had knockers for years, but they're still on. And what better program, what better entertainment was there on, on the Saturday? There was only one horse felt, fortunately. Horse and rider, okay. People don't come to see horses fall. They come to see the, the magnificent spectacle of horses against the brush. And we saw that on Saturday. We're going to see a lot more of it today. Is it uh, too much to ask a, a horse to jump, Ron? No. Is it it's a, a natural, natural thing. Is it? Oh, so you're getting in and out of bed every morning. No. No, it's a natural horse. Well, I hate the horse jumpers. find it easier than that. Ralph, no, but I, 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 no, I take the point. It's natural. Oh, it is. Mm. Ralph, you can, you can chase a horse through paddocks and fences without a ride on its back, and it'll jump, and it'll jump anything that's in front of it. The only time horses get into trouble is when there's a rider on their back. The rider is what puts the horse off balance. So it's a and cursed two-legged people again. That's right. Uh, horses are just natural jumpers, and... Uh, uh, it's their thing to do. A lot of people don't even want to see horses racing, but it's their natural thing. They R run, and it's in them. R Wyzeen at 12, Lockroom at 25, Darramullen 10, Rogues Gully 20, and Tom's Echo at 25 to 1. 
Zamalad is the one coming in all the time to challenge Belton's Bank for favouritism. I'm tipping Zamalad. Uh, Belton's Bank, a big run on the flat Saturday. I was very taken by Belton's Bank run on uh, Saturday, Ray. I, I thought it was a great hit out for this. Uh, and it's interesting to see that Zamalad had a similar sort of preparation. A couple of runs on the flat at Morfordville, and then it broke in Hill, but it was far from disgraced in the race won by Barani. I think Barani's going to be very hard to beat again this afternoon. I think they'll uh, just about fight it out. I, I went uh, just the reverse to you. I went for Belson Bank. I made it a special and a healthy respect for Zama Lad, and I thought a roughie called Tom Zecco at very big odds might be worth a place ticket for the Lady Punters. The Yonka Bringer Cup is race four, first leg of the four triller. The important scratchings are four friendly sure, six bobs the Tsar, and uh, number eight super track. Barmax is at fours. Valerian, 14 to 10 favourite. Stormy Rex, who is trained at the track, is at sevens. Barani at fives. Dealer's Choice, six. Further down, Wayne Rock at tens. Jewel Conquest, 25. Now, Northern Waters, which is without a rider at the present time, is only a five to one chance. And Starvish Officer, uh, I drove past the, the police barracks over there as I drove in and i tell you what, after three days on the beat, they're anything but stylish at the moment, but they're betting 33 to 1 about the constabulary. Ray, I think this is the best bet of the day, and I think you said 5 to 1, Barani? 5 to 1, Barani. Yeah, that'll do me. I hope we can cop a bit of that fours each way or so. I do think this is a special. It was a tremendous win at uh, Broken Hill. The uh, gentleman that ventured up there told me it was most impressive. Were they still able to... Uh, to see the runners at that stage oh, yeah. of the day? It was early in the day, it was about the middle of the program. Trainer AJ Self, he's improved his horse a ton since it came, uh, I think, uh, originally from Sydney. Sydney, yes, yeah. and, and likes to sting out of the ground. Uh, uh, Tony was at, uh, very went well to Mass yesterday and was praying for rain, but uh, obviously look, he's out of favour. It worked very well here too, I'm told, and uh, I thought it was a special. But you hope we can get each way odds about it. Race four, number five, Barani. Dangerous dealer's choice, a good honest run on Saturday, number seven. A number two, Valerian, a chance as well, although I don't know much about it. I think Valerian will win. Its there is. last two wins have been outstanding. I think they'll be flat out beating it again. Stormy Rex, I think, is the big threat. We have some additional scratchings for you, gentlemen. Here we go. In race three, take out number five, Wadeen. Number, event three, five, Wadeen. That's right. Race three, number five. Race five, number four, Diwali. Race five, number four, Diwali. So Glamour's going to run, Ray. Looks like it. And race six, number 17, House Power. Race 6, number 17, half power. So that should take the total to 21. OK, we're at the Great Eastern Steeplechase run, and it might lack a, a little bit of the the class of uh, previous years. It certainly has taken its toll this year, the, the injury and the and other factors, but uh, it's still, I think you could run radish around, and it would still be an exciting event. Ray, it's a tremendous spectacle year after year after year. And uh, this year we've got almost a capacity field again. A couple of scratchings there, just checking them. Kaimoto, who came out earlier, Diwali, and Lakeen. Well, Lakeen couldn't have won it. Diwali couldn't have won it on his performance on Saturday. And Kaimoto, I think, was a genuine doubt with the big weight he had. But what about those that we've got left? It's a tremendous field. I, I, I was very taken by the Greys run, Don Ruin, on Saturday. I was also taken by Wainui. You saw it as I saw it. He had no peace in the lead. He broke the track record himself and still wasn't able to win the event. He must have an outstanding chance because surely the tempo of the race won't be as great as it was on Saturday. And there's old fine advice who's much better suited over today's trip as well. I've gone for Don Ruin to win number five. I thought there was nothing wrong with his run on Saturday. He did something that I haven't seen him do for a long time. He made a mess of one jump and he's normally a very safe beginner, a uh, safe jumper. And uh, he's got his turn of speed on the flat. I still think he'd be hard to beat. I'd made the danger why I knew in number two and I put in the veteran fine advice, a good safe jumper as third pick. Gary D. Young Hurdle, staying with number two, the leader, who's won two of his last three starts. Gary Reed is the rider. Victories over the hurdles have been at uh, Morfordville on both occasions and both journeys over the journey of 2,600 metres. Belton's Bank ran a great uh, race behind Northern Waters on the flat at uh, Oak Bank on Saturday at Cummins and Hurdler. We should see this one in the money today. And my third tip goes to number eight, that is Dara Mullen, and third behind uh, Salatex on uh, Saturday. Outside of those, the experienced runner in the race is number four, uh, John Tarvis. Race number four will be the Onkapringa Cup, Valerian from the Bart Cummings Stable, ridden by uh, John Lett, certainly racing in very true form, the two fine victories at uh, 1800 metres at Morfordville in recent start. Number five, Barani. 
set two as Scott Pearson is joining with the stable and Penn himself for uh, an unplayed front of the match. They break until the win uh, the uh, Marlborough Cup over 2200 metres, winning narrowly from Stormy Rex. The third selection in the Cup today is number 10, and that is Jewel Conquest. On then to the uh, Great Eastern Steeple Chase, and I thought Wainui, number two, uh, is the one to win, and I'm putting this one in as a star bet. And then second behind Moravian in the Von Dusa in fourth record time on Saturday last. John Ruin should be improved by Saturday's run, number five, and fourth in the Von Dusa. The extra circuit should uh, suit today, and I'm putting in his third selection in the uh, Great Eastern Steeple Chase, uh, number nine, Heroic Speech, and a bit of ice. Beyond those, of course, a chance to find advice, it travels well. Uh, at Oak Bank, and likewise number three, Glee Matt, was announced earlier as a doubtful starter, but apparently is running. Don Ruin in front now, he's got three more left to go, here's the third last one, and Don Ruin makes his way over that uh, road crossing, down to this jump, Don Ruin in front by eight lengths clear, Rochelle Alo, why knew he was four lengths further back third, but here's Don Ruin, to the second last one, jumped it nicely, Don Ruin, by five lengths to Rochelle Alo, why knew he almost sold out, it's Don Ruin, rearing the home turn, under 400 metres left to go, one more left to jump, the rider taking a peek back as Don Ruin came into the straight clear of Rochelle Alo in second placing, he's running out the jump, but it's Don Ruin in front, up and over the last one, Don Ruin jumped it nicely, and with 200 metres to go, Don Ruin the grey, Will Fear, Rochelle Alo, and Wainui, and Don Ruin is coming down the post, he's got 100 metres left to go, but in no danger of defeat, and Don Ruin, the grey, runs down to the post, a very popular win, Don Ruin, uh, Don Ruin on the line, wins with a good eight lengths, Don uh, Ruin by eight lengths clear of, in second placing, Rochelle's a low. Don Ruin, written by G Hill, starting two to one favourite, Rochelle's a low second, 16 to one, while Newey third at 22 to 10. Now to the next event on the card, the graduation stakes, and here we had a late scratching in Lithgow Flyer. Mad Dog Brady was the last one, they're onto the home turn, 4.50 left to go, and Red Fire Jack making every post a winner over Sablon Air. Red Fire Jack by two to Sablon Air second, about two and a half away then to Craig Dale running on fairly, all wishes from a long way back down the outside, 2.50 left to go, and Red Fire Jack taken on by all wishes out very deep on the track. Sabloni is looking for the way out too. Inside the final 200 metres on the inside Red Fire Jack but all wishes down the outside. It's Red Fire Jack and all wishes. Red Fire Jack all wishes they hit. All wishes out wide on Red Fire Jack. Red uh, Fire Jack R. Woods 35 to 10 equal favourite. All wishes second at 55 to 10. Sabloni Air third at 5 to 1 and Craigdale the other equal favourite at 35 to 10 unplaced. Now a double to train uh, Tony Self comes up in race seven. By Blue and White, over on the inside, Kai Rocks, they were followed by Vipera, making ground was Bandery and Purvain was still well back in the field. The homeward bound now, 400 left to go, Gunnett Laird with Native Grace on the outside. They show the way, here's Lawrence's corner moving into third placing, being followed by Blue and White down the outside. It's Native Grace getting to the lead at the 200 metre mark, over Gunnett Laird under the whip down the outside. Blue and White is running on strongly, Lawrence's corner is still with them too. It's Native Grace in front with a few metres left to go. Lawrence's corner is coming out at Native Grace and Lawrence's corner they hit. It's maybe Lawrence's corner from Native and it was Lawrence's corner, A. Pegas, uh, starting at 32 to 10, Native Grey second at 20 to 1, Blue and White third, 32 to 10, and Purvain the 25 to 10 favourite, unplaced. Another close finish comes up in the eighth race. Capsule. He moved up to about a half length off the leader as they're halfway down the hill, two and a half to vaguely hours now being hooked around horses. They were followed then by Rough Harmony, a good gap in the field, then the Grand Vandal, followed by Tiger Eye, and well back came Lord Vasco, around the home turn, Venus is the leader, with time capsule up on the outside, Rough Harmony, and further out then, Coming home well was vaguely ours as they approach the 200 metre mark, vaguely ours going up to rough harmony and on the inside then time capsule battling back time capsule on the inside rough harmony and down the outside uh, vaguely ours settled down and fight it out vaguely ours on the outside and the uh, rough harmony vaguely ours and rough harmony vaguely ours just in front and vaguely ours is won uh, from rough harmony Vaguely hours written by A. Matthews, favourite 22 to 10, Grand Vandal finishing down the outside, got up to get a second at 12 to 1, and Rough Harmony third at uh, 14 to 1 in the lucky last. Now we take you to Sydney, and uh, here's the running now, letter stages of the AJC Derby, and uh, the 3 to 1 winner was Rose of Kingston. Ben Benger in front on the outside, grabbing him now, Rose of Kingston with Our Planet, Our Planet and Rose of Kingston at the 220. Rose of Kingston taking the lead now from Our Planet, two lengths away, rare for Mr. Digby Gurner's Lane Island Man can't win, but it looks like a filly today, it is Rose of Kingston, Rose of Kingston clear from Our Planet running on Gurner's Lane but Rose of Kingston, what a bonnie filly she is. And Rose of Kingston wins the derby from our planet. Rose of Kingston, uh, written by G. Willis at 3 to 1, our planet.